Indonesia is not just Jakarta, Surabaya or Bali, you know. It is not only that nickel to steel story. There is much more and many more things. The talent, the, the young uh, digital native, you know, all those things stack up on Indonesia side. So I started building on Gotong Reong from there. Inilah Endgame. Halo teman-teman, hari ini kita kedatangan Vikram Sinha. Beliau adalah pimpinan dari Indosat Oridu Hutchison. Vikram, so nice to see you and to have you here. It's an honor, Gita, you know, sitting with somebody like you. It's an absolute honor for me. I want to I wanna start out with a question on how you grew up. Because I, I think You know, a lot of people, I think, believe that the success of anybody is attributable to the values that somebody would have been brought up with. Tell us about yourself. You know, I, I, I'm a small town boy. Yeah. So I, I grew up in a steel city of India called Jamsetpur. And, and my father uh, was... Uh, initially uh, from a education background and then a HR professional. My mother, again, professor, then principal of a B8 college, which is teaching the teachers. And, and I had a younger sister, so two of us. Uh, that is where my upbringing was. It's incredible. You spoke about uh, the value, you know. Uh, I, I was a bit of a average student uh, and and uh, my sister was always like in her class he'll be first so i still remember a parents teacher meeting uh, where uh, you know my teacher told my mom is he a adapted son or what <laughs> look at the mom seems like look at the dad and look at his sister so but there was a lot of focus on value system education so this is how i grew up That put a lot of pressure on you? The fact that you were deemed, call it inferior to your sister, did that catalyze you? I think to, this, is, this is something, you know, uh, good that you asked me. You know, first time, you know, somebody has asked me like this. I think the way I put it is, I was very blessed. On, on one side, it stayed with me that, yeah. yes, I want to make a point yeah. that, you know, Uh, I am also a good son. I am also because of everyone around me or so much of focus. And when it comes to studies, they are top notch. But but both my dad and my mother, they supported me on whatever I want to do. So, so but that's to a point that stayed with me every time, you know. If I do a fast forward, you know, that was what I told you during my school days. Today, today, I have become an example. If anybody in my relative, if if their children is yeah. uh, not the top notch, they are doing well. So they say, okay, if, if Vikram can do well, just just focus on being a, a bit overall, a more smart student, right. be a bit street smart, yeah. do what you do. So I have become an example of that, that yes, there's a path forward, uh, you know, when, when, when you drive your passion when you build on your value system what about math the the, the family put a lot of premium yes. on you know being able to be good in math this or is, science this is this is uh, something you know when i was growing up uh, uh, we had only two three options you have to get it right so one the most premium was if you are the civil servant, mm. if you are clearing, if not, are you a doctor or an engineer? Yeah. To do all these three things, you have to be good in maths. Yeah. So, so there was a lot of focus. But I think I was never an outstanding student on maths, but yeah. that whole focus on uh, getting it right in terms of maths, physics, numbers, You right. know, really, it helps me till today. 
you know till yeah. today i don't need calculator for everything i my my mind and and that gives me a bit of a competitive edge you right. know so so yes that and i keep telling this to my children that look i have been supported on what i want to do yeah but don't compromise on math please uh, at least you know make sure you enjoy playing with numbers don't run away from numbers yeah you know there's there's this increasing perception by way of the fact that you know people from india are succeeding in many fronts right in many geographies in politics and policy in academia entrepreneurship consulting tech banking and all that right and and there is this increasing perception that the indians are just smart right in numbers but also smart in articulating talk talk to us about how your parents and whatever ecosystem you would have been in would have taught you to to help fill that or check that box this is something you know i have been asked few times you right. know uh, you you are right globally you see indian talent and yep. the tech booming uh, there are there have been lot of successful not only the big names but at a working level also two three thing i will tell uh, geeta here one is the empathy piece you yep. know most of these guys if you see they all come from a very humble background so so you know one is empathy second is the hunger and competitiveness nothing comes easy when you live in a country with a billion population <laughs> right from the school admission it's a long queue <laughs> right from school admission so if there are 100 applicant there are 10 seats so you have to have that that yeah. is the upbringing you don't take anything for granted yeah there is nothing called social security and all those things so right. that builds a bit of a dna and then the last thing which i have seen off late you know especially this whole internet boom getting on to the digital era it opened up the knowledge platform right. you know so i see them tapping on to it and leveraging that whole opportunity but it is a mix of empathy and 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 the uh hunger you know to to stand on your feet and make sure also the upbringing you know uh, till today if my boss tells me something i will be taking it very seriously you know it's yeah. not that i'm scared that my job will go up but it is the upbringing it is it is the overall surrounding you know so i think some of these things yeah. have helped the indian talent you know and especially on the empathy piece uh, geeta you know coming from humble background you know you know what it takes you know you know yeah. nothing comes on a platter what taught you to or what would have taught the indian people to to be able to articulate their thoughts because i would compare that with say the indonesians I mean you've you've been here long enough to know that the Indonesians they're cognitively equipped but they're not as verbal as articulate as you would probably want them to be right what what do you think would be some of the things that the Indonesians could learn so that they can be better storytellers I think this is again a very good point you are highlighting the first which comes to my mind is uh, britishers left english i think the dutch did not do the favor here <laughs> so that, that helps is, <laughs> that that is very fundamental yeah. so i'll tell you in india if you go to top 10 cities right from delhi to hyderabad to bangalore uh, the in on corporate world the first language of communication is english and that helps you know i still when you are in parliament it is very political you have to speak hindi put aside politics right but that helps you know that helps india over china also you know so yeah. so i think that english bit is something uh, you know which is uh, when i when i compare indonesian i personally feel they they are equally talented yeah. you know but they are not able to articulate yeah so one one is 
something around culture you know uh, which is which is and and then i keep encouraging when i go to small towns like balik papan i was a tarakan uh, you know i was telling english is not also my mother language english is a tool to perform better right. so i think uh, uh, and i tell them that if you you don't have to be perfect in english yeah. you know sometime i feel it when you are you you they understand much better english than speaking right. so sometime you know when i say they understand 70% but when they are replying they feel they'll make mistake yeah and i think somewhere you know culturally uh, the more people grow senior in indonesia they are very scared of making mistakes yeah so this is my personal reading yeah. i might be wrong but uh, i think uh, this is one thing uh, which the new generation and yeah. all how how we can support them on equipping themselves these are tools yeah. and 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 i i i tell you it is how important it is to do storytelling you know yeah. otherwise you will have everything you are not able to articulate what what would you tell the indonesian people that some of the things that they could do to overcome that fear because you know clearly the Indi- the indians are have, have been tremendous at projecting soft power by way of telling the story or being able to tell the stories in english and i've i've been telling as many indonesians as possible just imagine if there's 100 million indonesians that could speak english i think the story about indonesia would be different right what 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 do you think would be one or two things that they could do to overcome that fear the one thing which i tell them to be more hungry and be more confident uh, don't be complacent don't be content it's all yep. come from hunger yeah you know the good thing about indonesia is uh, and, and and it is incredible you know the good thing is i don't see so many beggars here i i don't see on the roads and all you know which is very good but somewhere you know uh, there is a uh, lot of people are con- content with you know uh, so yeah. have that bigger aspiration once you have a bigger aspiration uh, you will be more uh, challenging yourself you will right. be more confident about yourself and and you are absolutely right uh, english is a tool so yeah. put aside politics you know we we all need to promote uh, bahasa we need to right. you know be because indonesia itself is uh, the power of bahasa is connects in india Correct. there are i don't know how many languages you know <laughs> hundreds in, in india from one place to another that way indonesia has a strength you know yeah. at least the 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 bahasa in some of the part of uh, indonesia is little different from what it is in jakarta right. but at least it's correct which is very good you know yeah. which india is struggling you know they don't have still you know south india doesn't relate right. to north india <laughs> to you know east india so that way they have yeah. a strength but if english is needed to be a tool for you yeah. to be effective if it is needed to meet your full potential yeah. take it take yeah. it as a tool so so yeah. i think it all starts with the aspiration if yeah. you have a bigger aspirations some of these things will be sorted out i think bahasa has been a real asset in unifying and uniting correct the indonesian people so that's that's sort of like the baseline right but now the onus is upon us we want to go to the next level i think we've got to be able to internationalize and that can only be done by way of mastering that medium of being able to speak english I put it whatever it is if it Yeah is, whatever it takes whatever yeah, it takes sure. you know you that you hunger have, needs to be that there that hunger needs to be yeah. there if you need to learn chinese so be it if yeah. you need to learn or spanish French, japanese so italian it. whatever you know, yeah I, i was put on a country which was french speaking right uh, i could have said i can't but i didn't knew yeah but i took it and then i was figuring out how to do it So yeah. so but I had the hunger that I'm not going to get content here. Yeah. I I landed in Congo Brazzaville which is the at immigration also form is no English only French. French. Yeah. And I was like so little it is like sidik sidik bhasa so right. little. I had a choice to say no I'll not take but I took that pain to go there learn French to get that opportunity. Wow. So whatever language you use it as a medium and tool yeah. for you to get your aspiration and lock your full potential that should yeah. not be a constraint and i think 
I, I keep talking to my my uh, senior leadership team, especially in region. Right. They are they are so good, but sometimes you know uh, just that communication you know constrain them. And I've seen some very good success. You know, one of my head of region uh, who is in Kalimantan. You know, uh, 2019 when I landed, he will not open his mouth. and he was one of my brightest guy wow i pushed him personally whenever i travel mm. last time when i landed there we were having a conversation in the car i was happy he was talking to me much more comfortably in english but i was so happy it was music to my ear when he started talking with his team in english with, with wow 150 people you know in balik papa and he in a kind of a small mini town wow. hall and i gave that example see look how and and he must be 50 awesome. at that age you know awesome. so i think that all triggers from the hunger you have to put yourself yeah. and come out of comfort zone and start yeah. enjoying some of these things don't and, and recognizing the value yes right But you you were famously quoted for saying success is not final failure is not fatal just got to keep trying right I want to put that in the context of your international wisdom. You've traveled and worked in so many countries: Myanmar, Seychelles, Congo, Indonesia, Kenya, and all these places. What what would have been some of the key learning points in terms of failures and successes that brought about, you know, wisdom to you? I call myself a global citizen, right? You know? And I think uh, my average stay in every country was three, three and a half year. Yeah, this is the only country where you know uh, longer, I, <laughs> close to five year, and yeah. you know the mandate to me is uh, another three year. But more than that, you know, there is so much to contribute and learn that keeps me going. One common thing, uh, Gita, which I picked up is. Uh, when you talk about success and failure uh, first thing is we have to get it in our mind that it is okay to fail if you are not failing means you are not trying to many things yeah. yeah coming back to so this is common you know uh, every country you know uh, there is a fear of failure this is very common one thing but more on indonesia perspective when i landed here one of the thing i told uh, my close to 3000 plus employees it is okay to fail what it is not okay to keep repeating the same mistake but it is very much okay to fail yeah you know here uh, i i learned a lot uh, covid was uh, i'm not a indoor guy but i enjoy having meetings where i can read the body language whatever i say here people will say see up <laughs> so I understood. See, up doesn't mean yes. <laughs> so, so what I'm trying to say is, uh, I keep teaching people. Tell me no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I say that all the time. So, so <laughs> I, you know, I, 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 it took me some time. But on on Zoom, how do you do? On MS Team, how do you do? I, but I can see in his face, he's telling Sia, but he's not convinced. He, he, nothing will happen. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so, so one is, it's okay to fail. Second, you know. Uh, i'm a very strong believer of uh, that whole concept of beat yesterday what does that mean you don't compete against anyone else you compete against yourself as long as you are improving yeah it's a continuous improvement journey so for for simplicity my my tag line is beat yesterday just make sure yeah. that you are improving you know yeah. whatever you are doing whether you are trying to lose weight whether you are trying to improve right. something don't get stagnant you know either you go up or you go down you know if you think i can maintain it will not happen you know it 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 will start deteriorating so some of, some of these things uh, you know i personally feel blessed uh, uh, when when you are on a high also you yeah. need to keep telling yourself Yeah. that this will not continue yeah, it's not going to last this will not going to last <laughs> and i'm telling you we are personally i feel very blessed i've yeah. been on a good run from one country yeah. to another indonesia you know i i genuinely you know owe it to 
all my stakeholder my employees here but i keep talking to myself it's not going to last also you know you have been in such important position life is beyond positions life oh, yeah. is beyond this chair oh, yeah. so we have to train ourselves you know <laughs> not get very attached with yeah. all these uh, sometimes you can things. come back to earth yeah so, <laughs> so i think uh, that is why i made this quote you know yeah. uh, that talk, talk about your ability to make cultural adjustment because that's important for the young indonesians right who want to travel the world who want to help internationalize indonesia because they've they've got to inevitably move to other places right to to be exposed and to make a case for indonesia talk about that so if you want to become a global manager right the most important thing is to adapt on culture yeah so the first ground rule which i follow is whenever i land to any country the first thing is to learn and adapt don't try to preach right. and 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 if so when i was in kenya you know and i was very fresh in africa from india so in india uh, we are a bit workaholic so saturday it's a five day working week but on saturday also we work for 5 6 hour you know most of the time and one of my other colleague he was the ceo of uh, africa you know in kenya and then he made a rule that i want to make sure all my key people come to office on saturday mm. nobody turned up he was very hassled you know so when he was making this rule uh, one of my old colleague he was in tanzania you know so so the group ceo circulated this mail to everyone see look he is like you know bringing discipline he is trying to you know bring more uh, accountability blah 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 the other guy who had worked with me in coca cola he had been in africa for last 7 8 years he calls me he said this guy is your friend i said yes tell him he is going wrong i said what happened i said i'll not tell you now but watch out believe you me for 3 months it was complete nobody came then you know we were on a coffee and he said vikram i i was feeling like it is in subordination you know what the culture there is on friday night people party till 4 am so they will not wake up how will they come so in in other countries too they party until 4 so, so whatever you know so if you look at uh, kenya you know if they are rich poor whichever class whatever money they have that's the culture so you know they they are like friday the traffic are high the night life if they are sleeping at 3 am or 4 am how do you expect them to come to office so it's not that they don't want to come yeah. again on sunday they are at church yeah. so so you have to adapt you know if you are understanding and right. adapting then you are a most effective yeah. these culture nuances you know your ability this is one so how you are adapting how you know you know he can say i have lot of best practice yeah. from doesn't work you you are in a country first respect that culture adapt then you are shaping towards a global manager second play on the strength yeah you know don't criticize i i hate uh, global citizen or so called expat they are in some country and they crib i don't like this this is not good they are incompetent yeah. i said why are you here just for dollar yeah so please pick up the strength and play on the strength you know because the least you can do is to bring positive vibes yeah why are who has put gun on your head to be here if right. if you are complaining about things so the way i put it geeta is every country every culture every set of people have strength pick yeah. up those strength and double down on that yeah. so i think these are the two things which has helped me country after country and you you know once you start we all live in a glass house once yeah. you start demonstrating walk the talk give them the respect if you are walking that extra mile right. to understand their cultural nuances what works for them what is their inside going on little bit also you know yeah. you get it you will get 10x more back yeah so so that has helped me yeah. significantly i i think you've walked the talk and i want to push this on 
the merger, right? Because you've you've been lauded as a key champion in making sure that the merger took place in a good way by third parties, right? Not just by yourself and your employees. Talk talk about how you spearheaded this undertaking from a cultural standpoint, from a professional standpoint, organizational standpoint, political, geopolitical and all. I mean, lots of things must have gone through your mind and, and you, you pulled it off. I, I'll share with you, this is very fresh in my mind, you know, I'll share with you, yeah. jujurli. <laughs> <laughs> because this is like a flashback. Yeah. So it all started, you know, uh, when when I got a call uh, from one shareholder. So our, if you look at our right. merger, we have a kind of a complex structure. Yep. We have to a say joint, the least. joint control <laughs> between... Uh, CK Hutchison and Uridu Group. Yeah. And then we have government and we also have a local right. strong shareholder. Yeah. You've got the Indonesian side, you've got the Hong Kong side, you've got the Qatar side. And within each side, you've got layers of complexities. Please. I was here uh, working as chief operating officer. Right. And, and I was very focused on, on making sure that, you know, I deliver my mandate. I was on a three year turnaround and that was working well. So first thing which helped me was, I was not insecure that whether after merger I'm here, what role I'll do. I was enjoying my role. Yeah. The other thing I was very clear was that, you know, I need to drive the whole operation till the last day, uh, you know, because these are things uh, can happen or cannot happen. You don't know till the time it happens, right. correct? With that mindset and background, I get a call somewhere in 2021 in September, you know, uh, from from Doha that, you know, we want you to lead. So I, I took a pause and I said uh, two, two questions, you know, and this call was from the highest level. First, only Doha or is it? all of you. He said, no, you know, all of us collectively, which is the local shareholder, right. Hong Kong. I said, that's very reassuring for me, you know. Second, I said, uh, do we want to make this transaction successful or you want to make this merger successful? These are two different things. People at, at shareholder level, you know, they, they have a lot of priorities and, and we have to respect that. So I was very straight in asking this question, whether you want to get this transaction done or you want to make this merger successful. And I, the answer I got was, no, it's our reputation also. We want to make the merger successful. The same conversation I had with Hong Kong, same question. Again, I got the same at the highest level, you know, answer back. I told them, Give me just two days. I'm very honored that, you know, this is a role which is bigger than, you know, what I have done ever. But just give me two days, you know. So the only thing which was playing on my mind, you know, uh, I, 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 I had met a lot of people and everyone told me that first, telco merger have struggled. Joint control, disaster. So... The thing which came to my mind is uh, that, look, this has not worked. And right. if we can make it work, this that time if was there, this will be creating history. At yeah. least, you know, I have an opportunity to create Absolutely. history. The other thing which clicked to my mind is that this merger is good for Indonesia. Because that I have been in this country, I know. Telco is a scale business. Uh, only one company cannot fulfill the need of the digital infrastructure. Mm. At least you need a strong number two. This is a mm. very big country. You know, whatever yeah. you do, you need that. So that was playing on my mind. So I came back to both the shareholder and I said, it's an honor, you know, and, and I will, my only request is there are certain guiding principles I want to share with you. And, and if, if, you support me, I'll feel more confident. So I put four guiding principles. The number one was, I said, I want to make one plus one equal to 11. What does that mean? Maximize, not optimize. Right. So this was my first. 
second i said i will put more priority on experience over cost this was a bit controversial wow. so what what do you mean mm. so i got questions on that what do yeah. you mean i said look i will deliver the synergy value because the analyst are only looking at the synergy value whether you will deliver 300 or 400 million of us dollar synergy value whether you will do it in 3 year or 4 yeah. year i said that's the mandate but customer doesn't care about merger no merger i have to deliver yeah the better if it is not adding value to them that is no why point. merger yeah. fail employee i can't galvanize the employee on synergy value i have to galvanize them on growth yeah and in a scale organization i can't be talking to everyone there are point where they need to decide so these guiding principles are very important the third one was we have to ensure that there is no bias and this is where mm. your point comes on culture yep. you know uh, 80% of my last 18 months is on culture integration mm. so people ask me oh you will follow qatar culture or you will follow hong kong culture you know it, it's not easy people right. were curious they were very capo you know you understand yeah. at at uh, top 100 leader uh, i have 140 people they all know they are senior guys that eventually they'll be 75 box right so how do you do this with absolute transparency and fairness and how do you do it fast so so on on culture side uh, you know uh, what i can talk about is these are the softer aspect the number and all will follow if you get the softer aspect on no quota system no bias how you bring trust and transparency and if you have to take difficult decision also don't hesitate mm. do it with fairness and do it with respect if 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 you hold on to those things you will not just do justice to yourself to your right. company and to the other person also but uh, it needs your personal attention you know uh, talking to people on ground listening to them and and being adaptive and this also taught me that you should have healthy disrespect for your own decision uh, geeta one mm. thing mm. this merger has taught me as we as we grow up in life we bring our egos first and we keep defending them we keep defending them so i have the right to criticize the old vikram i i and when i do that i encourage my leadership team also that we need to have healthy disrespect for our own reason you know wow so it it it, it is important because otherwise you know it is a blame game okay who did this who told that what happened i have been doing on one side people integration our plan was to integrate it uh, in 7 months i did it in 3 months because i know it is not good for anyone how did i learn that because i was listening to junior most people i was listening to middle level people so you need to learn on the move yeah whether i keep one brand or two brand consultant can tell you what they can but you need to be close to your customer your employees you need to listen and then once you decide you have to communicate in a simple clear manner yeah. you know it is not about the head office guys it is about the last guy on the ground he knows the clarity of his role he every day morning he knows he is not insecure and and the other piece is connect them to the bigger purpose yeah Within one month, I realized that what will take me home is the larger purpose of not only selling SIM card. We have 100 million. We, you know, first time in the history of merger, in first 12 months, we have added 6 million customer. Most of the analysts were asking me how much you will lose, whether you will lose 10% or 25%. So before I can answer, they will not listen. He will tell me, tell us how much you will lose. So <laughs> when we demonstrated 6 million addition, you know, they were like, okay, and still they are watching that. Is it sustainable? So it's okay. It's fair. Yeah. But, but the point which I'm trying to tell you is these are outcome. What goes behind is 
is this whole it's a people and culture and culture sometimes get misused you know you have to walk the talk yeah. you have to be authentic you have to connect all your employee to the purpose so we are so passionate about not only connecting about empowering every indonesian right. yeah because indosat you know you will know more and better than me is the first company who oh, yeah. connected indonesia to the world so yeah. there is so much of yeah. I, i i i started History. my career from coca cola yeah. i know the power of brand yeah you go to any desa kabupaten kacamatan indosat needs no introduction yeah so so the whole purpose of empowering every indonesian i can see sparks the moment i talk about purpose the smangat voice is very different so i really double down on it and and i have been doing it with complete genuine and single minded focus things revolves around it you know people ask me you want to be number one i said who cares as long as i am beating yesterday as long yeah. as i am true to the purpose every, right. we are enjoying the journey yeah. you know how do we deliver marvelous experience and and to do that first you have to deliver employee experience <laughs> so, so this is the journey where we are in now how personally it must have been really tough to lower your ego it must have been really tough to show disrespect to the old vikram was that because you knew resolutely that that's what it was going to take for you to spearhead the merger process there was there was no other way you are absolutely right i i i realized that because generally i have stayed in any country 3 3 and a half year right. and then completing 3 year and i have to start a new inning it has to start from me yeah and and geeta this is not easy yeah i still say i did it because we were on a high it becomes even more difficult when you're not doing well yeah but at least if i said if i can't do it now yeah i'll never be able to do it yeah so i have put a very strong big board outside my office that leave your ego before you come in just to these are messaging you know yeah color these posters these these are all messaging you know so it has to start from me and and if it's like memory muscle you know you have to practice it yeah. it's not easy and mm. then i wanted my direct reporty to then it goes down so yeah. culture change happens and starts from top wow and otherwise it will not work but i can again tell you it is not easy you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, i'm sure <laughs> here, here in indonesia it is not about vikram they they the position ceo is like okay whatever he says is right, right. and i have to stand up and say we did it wrong and vikram that old vikram I, I did it wrong it's okay because in a four year term you make so many things and something will go wrong it's okay it's okay to make mistake if you do 10 things three will go wrong to talk, talk about some of the things that you went through that didn't go as planned and you had to fine tune or you had to refine within within reasonable boundaries yes so the uh, one is getting the people integration right. you know uh, top 100 leader so i i had so first i said uh, i was working with one of the top notch consultant to have a org design which support my 3 year plan so if you if you look at at a in minus 1 so ceo direct reporty below that we had around 76 boxes but i had 130 people and the plan was to get this done in 3 month i did that in 1 month i said i can't have insecure people you know people at an at senior level because there are lot of people under them and if he or she is insecure what will happen yeah, yeah? this was okay we did it and the success rate was very high we did it with fairness the the challenge was uh, this is where i had to have healthy dis- i didn't want it to be branded i wanted to be a new vikram i don't want people to think that i am doha or i am hong kong i am here for ioh i am indosat uridu hachisen 
if if you don't yeah. get it right yeah. you will always be branded and biased right. you know sometimes perception is reality right. so so i think you have to demonstrate the other one which was even more complex so the biggest synergy value you know out of 400 around 275 million us dollar is coming from integrating our network so when you put physical sites indosat and hsn3 put together from 28000 physical site we moved to 62000 and we had to eliminate 17500 duplicate sites mm. so the consultants and everyone this was all done pre merger and that is why you know we were telling there is a synergy yeah. value so the whole plan was to do it in 26 months my my focus was not to bring synergy value faster than needed and again this taught me if you have the larger purpose you solve bigger problem in a more clear manner right. my focus was customer experience i said customer i was very clear traveling on the ground customer don't care about merger no merger if you are a im3 customer you should i at least hold on to what you are getting i have bought something with certain expectation it should not deteriorate so my whole philosophy was hold and grow first 6 months hold and then grow you know because i'll have more spectrum i'll right. have more site but where things goes wrong because of all this this synergy you know on on the fly you are dismantling mm. trying to bring experience deteriorate and this is what i picked up yeah. in vodafone idea india merger which was right. of scale this is what i picked up in italy you know this is what i picked up in australia you know this is where people lose anywhere between 7 to 25% of customer because why will you care if you start getting right. deteriorated service so when i was trying to solve that i had to change the whole design principle and this was complex i had not only my team i had big partners like Huawei, Nokia, Ericsson at the highest level, and these are senior guys. If you have made certain design principle, and suddenly you have to change, you know, my senior leadership team also became a bit. So I had to put myself in and say that okay, it is the Vikram who took that wrong decision. Let's change it. Mm. Let's not right. <laughs> drag it. So you know, uh, those war room, uh, and and the purpose was very clear that we are doing this. for improving customer experience at every site level wow. don't look at averages every customer matter wow. so it was not easy i i still remember last year that september october because we have to change the design and there are 10000 people working so if you change something it has an impact it has financial impact so who will take so it has to be led by the senior most member you have to this is where you have to say don't blame anyone it if it is it is me it is disrespect for my deeds and i yeah. don't want to say it is my cto deeds and or it is my cco deeds and or it is huawei deeds and or nokia right. it is me so when you give that cover that let's do what is right don't try to and it has to be called out and you have to take so yeah. this is where these are some of the things uh, geeta which taught me yeah. that how important it is to have healthy disrespect So so these are the two example I can tell how, you. How how did you deal with moments when you felt that there was one person in the room that didn't believe what you had in mind? I I think uh, my learning is uh, you cannot get to on on a on a scale operation right. you cannot get to perfection. Yeah. As long as you get to 80 90% good enough. To yes, you have to yeah. you 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 know and let me give you a small example when i said uh, merger is good for indonesia merger is good for employees i was reading the script first person to believe was me because you keep telling this keep telling this <laughs> after two months it yeah. was my 13 direct reporty they started believing it at 80% <laughs> and then after six months my top 100 employee wow till date i don't say my 3000 plus employees plus partner but now 
at least you know you talk to anybody junior most uh, 80% yeah. of them will say that we have this is on the board purpose, this is what that's a hell of a number so so i think uh, uh, this, you you have to have a right balance between speed and perfection yeah. you know my my uh, hunch is if i get to 70 80 you have to take risk and that is where i say yeah. it is okay to fail but what i have learned is don't waste your time on reviews yeah focus on problem solving yeah focus on resolving mm-hmm. friction you know things which matter get involved at a design principle level geeta i before this merger and till today a little bit for me you know i i was not about what for me strategy is not what it is about how but from mm. how i used to quickly move to who yeah but this merger taught me that if you you can only get a right who once you spend if this really matters for you and for your organization spend your time on the design principle of who sorry how think through end to end because if you are a ceo you you have the best yeah. authority to think through end to end look at the how get the design principle get the hedgehog what will help you scale it up right and then get the who in and leave it to him but straight away i have made mistakes straight away from how to who hire a who and i see two three cases the who is failing do i blame him or blame myself i want to i want to explore this when when you admit mistakes in front of your colleagues or staff do you actually get more respect I, in I, in in hindsight i guess yes yeah. i think yes and no yeah. yes for younger employees still uh, the average age where it is more than 45 and all yeah. they don't like it <laughs> yeah. the younger one want to see a more authentic yeah that's what i thought uh, yeah but but uh, uh, the average age uh, because indosat has a strong legacy with the hachesan was a younger organization so that is why i say yes and no Let's see what what are some of the things that you think you could have done differently or better since 2021 this is something uh, is always keep playing on my mind two thing i'll say one you know don't hold on to people you know uh, and then sometimes it is very difficult you have been working with someone at, especially at a senior level if if he or she is not the right fitment you know you it's better you take a call you know it's like there are saturdays i'm firefighting and then then my wife will tell me what's going on vikram i said yeah you know john again screwed up he said i've heard this name few times <laughs> so, so same story different day <laughs> so, so 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 you know my 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 learning has been that you know you have to do it and do it with fairness respect but yeah. don't hold on so this is one learning i i i think i could have done better because we are in the people business and then we yeah. and when you have such turn around mandate yeah. and when you have such important thing you know you 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 cannot compromise i think i could have done better you know this is one learning mm-hmm. and there is always an opportunity the the other thing is the ability to really get the value system you have to align on the value if you are on a mission when you have a choice between a top performer or or a extraordinary employee versus a team player i think i'll err more towards a team player you know because yeah uh, i'm 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 running a bit of a large scale operation and you know maybe this guy is not in the right place he can do something as a subject matter expert but i'll put more weightage on on team player versus a uh, solid uh, top performer individual, individual contributor yeah. he he can be the best guy but 
what is very important is to get the team dynamics you know right so uh, i will really put more weightage on team player you you've been very loud about gotong royong right just put that in the context of how you see the organization going forward and and you know i've i've read quite a number of books narrated by successful leaders right one of which is satya nadella it's just amazing how he spends so much time in his weekly meetings not talking about numbers just talking about whether or not his you know lieutenants spend time fishing over the weekend spend time barbecuing over the weekend and that entail empathetic you know tendencies that rubbed off on how actually microsoft would deal with all the stakeholders and there's so much more empathy and all of a sudden it's translated into better numbers overall and you talked about gotong royong just just ex- let's explore this gotong royong is very close to my heart yeah uh, but before i build on that does that go back to your indian roots for sure some of these things yeah. are very common you know and lot of things what i see on my upbringing in india and indonesia in fact indonesia is plus one yeah and then gotong royong is one such example you you touched upon this word empathy you know yeah. satya satya is like a role model for many of us yeah but i learned this from my dad he was an hr professional you know i you know i i i, I lost him uh this month early yeah. this month but he left me with two clear message always be optimistic and always be kind and have that empathy you know he he has a background of xrri hr tata steel yeah. and all so dealing with 70000 employee you yeah. know so so and this is what i hear from you right. what satya is doing and also that has been on my upbringing value system building that to gotong reong you know i i'll tell you today we are successful we are not done but it has been a good as you said through third parties also right. you know it has been heading towards one of the most successful merger it is because of this whole principle and philosophy around gotong reong two three example i'll give you you mm. know network integration such a scale integration i could not have done it alone so i am working with a partner first mindset yeah and i keep telling all my leadership team we have to make money with our partner not from our partner you know subtle but very big difference this this this, this is very important so on one side merger gave me the scale and if you want to attract the best partner they want scale all these big guys whether it is silicon valley china they will not give you attention until unless you have scale and this is where i say it all started building up from being in the right place and at the right time indonesia story look at indonesia you know uh, you look at any numbers in terms of digital gross merchandise value gdp growth you know we need to talk about this much more yeah you know there is so much of opportunity indonesia is not just jakarta surabaya or yeah. bali you know mm-hmm. it is not only that nickel to steel story there is much more right. and many more thing the talent the the young uh, digital native you know all those things stack up on indonesia yeah. side so i started building on gotong royong from there so so if you look at this philosophy of indonesia on gotong royong i keep telling my partner that we want to solve real challenges with our partner i can't do it alone so all the big uh, corporates here whether it is pertamina mandri yeah. bca they are our customer when i talk to their ceo i said if i know these are the top 3 challenges you are struggling and i want to make an attempt to solve it i don't want to do it alone i will bring this whole ecosystem of the best partner in the world and then we do it if i try doing it alone if i think that you know i want to take everything on the value chain it will not work and the example which i want to talk to you about is the integration you know this 26 month integration 
we did it in 12 month it is only because of this partner first approach and and first time in the history of telco business instead of penalty i use reward carrot as opposed to stick yes okay. so all those things are part of contract and yeah. ceo i don't need to keep reminding them if you fall you this is a part of contract right the chief procurement officer legal that's done it's okay but as a ceo my narrative was let's do this the reward and recognition we did a proper reward night with lot of recognition see uh, we all deal with people so money is not everything money is important but how you treat people how you treat your partner how you work with them how you connect i have been connecting all my strategic partner to the larger purpose so i try getting the like minded partner but the gotong reong philosophy is much deeper you go to villages you know how people come together yeah. without asking what is there for me let's get together and get it done yeah so that has been the approach when you create upside when you really solve problem everyone will be taken care yeah but if you are worried about you know it's what true. is there for me it's so true. i think this philosophy is very very strong yeah. and and i have been benefiting from that and i want to contribute much more and and there are people you know who are ready to come and and put the skin in the game for the larger purpose so we are in that journey and and i am a very strong believer and i keep talking about this in all my international forum yeah. that you have to come and see and learn from this whole philosophy of gotong reong it is a simple thing like collaboration but it is deep into indonesia dna and this is a very powerful thing which can differentiate it we can solve any problem right i, I want to shift to the next topic of how your organization as one of a few in a country could could help usher what's been labeled as this massive future of the digital economy right uh, the numbers range between 15 to 20% of the gdp uh do you think you will be you'll be content with just being an enabler or do you see yourself as potentially morphing into a different sort of animal you know going forward i think gita this is a very good question so yeah. first thing on my head was let's create history by ensuring that yeah this indonesia merger is the yeah. most successful merger it is not about it been, yeah. Yeah. indonesia merger because there is a lot of policy intervention you know omnibus <laughs> law and all which has come behind yeah what we are seeing today yeah with this to your point uh, one thing i see can be a game changer uh, for indonesia you know where indonesia can leap frog when we talk about future right is generative ai yeah and i'll tell you why i say so the digital infrastructure there is a lot of interest in indonesia mm. you know and the talent while on one side there is a skill gap yeah. where we need to see how we can scale up fast right yeah but on the other side it is a very digital native right. you know so generative ai everyone is starting why can't we leap frog mm. to solve because it brings productivity increase as high as 40% it opens up new opportunity yeah. you know so instead of being scared or thinking it will disrupt you i see this happening in india also how indonesia and india these country can take leap frog why everything has to come from silicon valley yeah at least you know we, right. we need to make and that that has been happening you know so so i think this whole piece and this is where we have started a project called project maranti mm. and and uh, uh, i i had the opportunity to meet uh, bob who is the group ceo of mckinsey right during g20 and and he said vikram i have full confidence in indonesia we will support you so they have come in as an impact partner and then i have some of the best global partner like google tech mahindra cisco is also you know talking to us and then i have some of the best local partner 
i have uh, jerry yang patrick you know so i think it's that again that whole gotong riong all of us coming right. together so what we want to do is to solve real problem you know we are getting into 5g it's not about speed game yeah. there is so much of investment what 5g will help us on consumer side on industry 4.0 for that we have to get ready yeah. otherwise all this investment will be waste similarly how all these emerging technology so so we are we are all first looking at how can we solve some of these real problem and while doing that uh, from a shareholder point of view we want to get our fair share telco if you see uh, last in 3g and 4g era was not able and i don't blame them we have to blame ourselves uh, believe you me i don't blame ott neither i blame regulator we have been self inflective you know yeah and and covid for me was an eye opener yeah. the respect for telco sector in the eyes of policy maker yeah whether it is work from home you know education from home mm. or even getting entertained from home so people right. saw the important role the backbone is telco right. activity but moving forward while we solve real problem how do we get the fair share in that value chain is something i am very conscious of mm. and i believe that uh, at least at indosat or edu hachisan we we need to get this right when yeah. we are getting into building up on 4g and 5g and and the another unique thing which is happening is all the big guys also you know uh, they understand that they need to be more fair to the country right. first and to the partner on the ground because yeah. wall street is also very demanding <laughs> the next level of growth will not come so so i have been working with my team this is where we need to learn to have healthy disrespect for ourselves don't blame other what we could have done differently we were inward looking we were just focusing on cutting each other price price people are looking for value yeah. so so i think uh, you will see some good thing coming and hopefully you know uh, we can make indonesia proud and we can yeah. make good example i want to i want to peel the onion a little bit more here i mean if if you read the reports by some of the pundits out there the opportunity f- coming from ai staggering right and you know some would say 50 trillion dollars some would say even to the extent of 100 trillion dollars in the next 10 to 15 years it'd be a mockery if indonesia is not participatory in that right i mean there's there's a risk yes. that most of that is going to accrue to only china and the us there's less risk that india is going to miss out than indonesia missing out on this bandwagon right so i mean you you belong to an organization that sees this coming this train is coming right and you're vested in making sure that indonesia is a beneficiary of this bandwagon coming so Is there a risk that we're going to miss out on this train in a big way? I mean, is there a risk that most of the 100 trillion dollars will accrue to countries other than Indonesia? And if it and if that's the case, what are some of the things that we could do to mitigate the risk of our missing the the bandwagon? Absolutely there's a risk. Yeah. You know, and and yeah. I'm I'm scared of that. Uh, from IOH point of view, also yeah. as a CEO, there's a risk yeah. that I'll become irrelevant. Yeah. So first thing, uh, Gita, to your point, people need to take it seriously at a country level, at a company <laughs> level. You know? So it's a serious <laughs> risk. Yeah. It's not a joke. It is not a metaverse story. This is real. It's scary. This is not a metaverse. Metaverse, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> alternative. That time alternative also, reality. People <laughs> were telling that it is. Uh, for me, it is not about what will be the opportunity size. Yeah. It is happening now. Now the train has yeah. arrived. Yeah. And, yeah. And and it is changing the life. The, the, uh, the future is here. Correct. So small small things, you know. Today, English issues can be solved because you know I used to struggle correcting the grammar and all. some of my junior most employees they are they are you know what they say okay this is what i have written 
uh, change it as if it has been written by McKinsey and then new things come. Within seconds. Yeah. So, so what I'm trying to say is, yes, it is a risk. And then uh, on, a, on a very small capacity and then we'll, we'll need people like you to give a wake up call to policy maker, decision maker, and also corporate. You know, we have to see how we can make it an opportunity for Indonesia. Right. As I tell you, I'm a very optimistic person. When COVID was happening, when people were cutting down on CapEx, I increased $200 million more. So all these risks also comes with opportunity. So, so what is important is we act now. So one of the things which I'm doing is I have created, I'll, I'll, I'll like to invite you to come and visit our experience center. Yeah. What I saw it in Silicon Valley, I saw it in Mountain yeah. View. I have created it in Jakarta, yeah. you know, in, in KPPTI, my office, which is like heart of the city. It's like bringing use cases, you know, we call it co-create, innovate, and I'm putting disproportionate focus on generative AI, you know, and and we, we all, can I do it alone? At an IOH level, the answer is no. I need to bring the right partner. I need to see what I am protecting on the value chain, what I need to do in-house, what I need to do with partner. But the bigger risk is more, how do we turn it into opportunity? Indonesia right. has that. And and you are right, uh, you know, I, 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 I follow some of the things that are happening in India also. A lot of things are similar. Let's Let's make sure we turn the table. You know, it is our opportunity. But uh, more than me, uh, people like you, we need to get the attention <laughs> from from all the decision maker, policy maker, how we can create those, uh, you know, a lot of revolution have started from what you call it as tea, tea party or coffee community, you know, whether how Apple was made, you know, there was a small room where like-minded people used to get, but more action has to happen. The, the observation that I'm making is that, you know, I'm vested in increasing the marginal productivity of Indonesia. As, as it is, it stacks up at about $24,000 on a per capita per year basis in terms of goods and services, right? And it doesn't stack up well with the likes of Singapore, which is at about $200,000. The more sophisticated economies, I think are going to be better and bigger beneficiaries because they're already at a higher level. So how do we figure out ways to elevate this $24,000 worth of marginal productivity by way of your being an enabler or a creator of this new train, right? And and it's it's empirical in that AI has already been helping in increasing productivity by orders of magnitude. And the cost of training AI has also dwindled 50 to 60% per year. So the exponentiality of the, the delta and efficiency, we need to capture this, you know, nationwide. That's the first observation. The second observation is that I think we need to figure out a way entrepreneurially nationwide that they've got to be able to not only survive, but thrive despite the government, not because of the government. That that mentality of depending on the government, I think somewhat dilutes the entrepreneurial value proposition, right? W what do you think of these two points? No, I, 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 I it, this is music to my ear. And this is where <laughs> I, we, I, I request people like you, you know, we'll play our part. Uh, we need to get serious. We we need to act. Yeah. You know, time is running out. We need to act. And this is an opportunity. And if not done, this will become a risk. So I completely agree to what you said just now. Uh, how do you see yourself and your organization being helpful in preparing the soft infrastructure. This, this goes back to the earlier point of education, right? I mean, what are some of the observations that you can share with us in terms of whether we're ready and to the extent we're not ready? What are some of the things that we have to do in the next five years, you know, as a nation? 
to get ready for this train that's coming fast. I think one is the uh, digital skill set. Right. Uh, you know, there's a, the, for whatever it is now, there's a shortage of yeah. close to 10 million. And, and, you know, this is beyond language, coding and all. So how we can learn from each other. Mm. You know, I see a great opportunity on some of these things between India and Indonesia. India has created a platform called ONDC. It's a government platform. And one of the vertical is uh, skill literacy. And it is all, I was talking to someone who is behind it and I was telling how I can bring it. Uh, and then I was talking about constraint, Basa versus English, yeah. you know. He said, Vikram, this is no language, this is coding. They don't need Basa. <laughs> so this is, you are absolutely right. So again, whether it is from China, India, or from wherever, we need to scale up fast. Yeah. You know, because at the end of the day, the power here is people. Yeah. It's revolving around people. Either people can feel left out or they can start enjoying. Yeah. Still, it will need brain. You know, this this uh, this algorithm doesn't understand number. So you need people to get it right. Yeah. So it is not that it is replacing people. Yeah. How you... So this is one big piece, Gita, you know, and it goes back to what you do to bridge and what you start doing fundamentally right. And I think the government is doing Nadeem himself, uh, you know, with such on, you know, bringing things at a school education, college yeah. education and all, how we can have many more engineering colleges, you know. Yeah. So I think there's a short term versus long term work which is needed. The other piece is, uh, as you rightly said, instead of only depending on government and all, how private sector corporates yeah. need to come together and start putting good examples. It's very infectious, you know. Uh, we have seen the era of valuation game is over. So yeah. now we need to get to, when it comes to startup also, start focusing on real business, <laughs> you know, and then start looking at, uh, I, 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 when it comes to doing business, I am a bit old school of thought. Whatever we do, we have to make sure when we are getting EBITDA positive, if you're not making money, it's not a charity game. You know, you, if you're not sustainable yourself, how can you help anyone else? So, so I think there was a bit of a wave. I'm happy that, you know, that has come to. It's a well point. needed yeah. wake up call. It was writing on the wall, you know, from series A to series B to series C. I think the startup mindset, the entrepreneurial mindset also need to come with a zero to one game. Do yeah. something, do the first shop, yeah. right? I really like people like Payaya, BCA, you know, yeah. I learn whenever I play golf yeah. with him, I learn from him. Every, every it branch of bank they open, they make it profitable. Yeah. So there's yeah. something we have to learn. It's concrete. <laughs> we have to learn it's something. Real. You know? <laughs> it's real. It's <laughs> not that, you know, so, so I think. It's not just things, a story, right? Yeah, but it's real. Yes. That mindset of doing real business, but you need that startup. It's okay to fail. I'm again saying. Yeah. But, it's not okay to fail just because you are driving a valuation game. Yeah. Not okay to waste those money. I want to ask you a general question on, on AI. Since you brought it up, I, I, I'm in a camp that sort of is a bit dystopian in a sense that, you know, AI is sort of this hallucination, right? That's been driven by the hypnosis. And I, I happen to spend time in Silicon Valley and I see these technologists just pushing the train forward without roping in other experts of different dimensions. Intuitively, I just sense that at the rate that this is not being pushed forward in a multidisciplinary manner, there's that risk of this becoming somewhat malign. And at the end of which will come this disease that could be malignant for humanity. And from, from a regulatory standpoint, I see countries or governments taking different views, right? They, some would just open the whole kimono. Some would be a bit more reserved because they need to weigh in on what's good, what's bad, and whether it's net good, net bad. And some don't even know. 
how to respond <laughs> to this train coming, right? Is that the right way of thinking about AI? I mean, the, the, the temptation is to think that it's going to be net positive, right, for humanity. But I don't know. I just feel that there's this risk. It may not go in the right direction. You are bang on. You are absolutely right. You know, mm. with, with my limited knowledge and exposure, I have been in a discussion with Harvard professor, some of the best mind, you know. Uh, this was three months back and this was the question. I have been in discussions with some of the people who are really, you know, around it. So, first, you are absolutely right. You know, this need to be regulated and there has to be a more cohesive, cooperative. Right. How do you use AI for bigger good of humanity? Right. There's a clear risk. One, one risk I'll tell you which I experienced and I was like that. So, my, my basa is sidikit sidikit, you know, I'm <laughs> learning, I need to be much good better. Enough. So, today, today, you know, uh, we have a startup company partner they came and they told me to keep reading the script and with my video in English. So I, I kept reading. After 48 hours, they don't even need to talk to me. They are punching whatever they want me to say in Basa and then they play my video. I can't recognize my own voice. It is like Vikram talking Basa as fluent as possible and with my, you know. I can even make you look like Elon Musk. <laughs> but, but, you know, if, if, if my wife here Somebody, she will know it is Vikram. It is so, so close to real. And I am talking in Basa. It was a fun thing that, you know, you have not improved. Now you will make AI speak Basa for you. And it was real. And they just took 15 minutes of my script. And they converted. And they don't even have to talk to me. They will type whatever Basa they want. And then that fits into my voice. First thing I did, I called them. I said, sign the contract. You can't use my <laughs> voice without my consent. <laughs> yeah. So there is so much of risk around disinformation, yeah. fake news and all. It's right. scary. It's really scary. Right. So first thing first, there has to be a larger consensus on all these forces who are behind it, that it has to be for the good. Yeah. But please understand, uh, this is not a real fair world you know yeah. there'll be forces who will be working and there'll be unit economics to support all these things which we are worried about so then comes how it has to be regulated so these two things uh, personally i'm a very optimistic guy i i see a lot of work happening you know on on on, on legal folks also, you know, to regulate this what are the laws how it has to oh, happen man. it's like a different it's a black world. box correct yeah. so so Two things, again, I'm saying this with my limited knowledge. One, it has to be dealt for the larger good of humanity. It is transformative. Yeah. Second, whether we like it or we don't like it, when this whole, there is so much of, you know, fraud happening around OTT, uh, OTP, fake news, it will multiply. So just do 20x more. So how are we putting the regulation country after country? How there's a bigger consensus on making sure that the regulations support the greater good? While it supports innovation, it supports, yeah. uh, you know, uh, all these things. So these are the two things. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic in coming months, we will see a lot of work happening. I just, I just think that people of culture, economic, spirituality, philosophy, they need to be roped in, at yes. least conversationally, yes, for purposes of coming up with this frame, right, of rules and regulations, environment, all the other dimensions, I and mean, better yet, in a discourse, right? And to the extent that they're not roped in, we might just miss out on something that's going to cause some one to just slip. No, you are absolutely right, you know, because the impact is so wide. Yeah. You need to get people from all sector, all section, all community, right. when you frame up this regulation so that none of these are left out. I'm so right. happy that you are calling it out. 
we we yeah. I'm, I'm completely with you because you know having known so many technologists they they think they're they're, they're the smartest people yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which arguably could be but but they may not be the wisest right i think wisdom i think needs to be infused in in the conversation vikram any other messages you want to share to the young audience in I, indonesia first of all you know I, as i said when we started it's an absolute honor i i learned a few things <laughs> right away and i want especially uh, uh, you know indonesia biggest asset is its people the yeah. young talent the average age uh, i i keep telling my employee that we need to have bigger aspiration we need to think big because indonesia deserve much more so yeah. let's work with this philosophy of gotong royong how we can all come together how we can solve some of these challenges which we are facing and at the same time how we enjoy the journey in a manner which is very very close to indonesia and the culture i want to go back to the earlier point of teaching somebody to speak an international language i've i've seen with my own eyes how being able to speak an international language completely transforms an individual and and what i mean by that is all of a sudden this person can imagine and and i think you can play a very big role by way of facilitating whatever platform you you have in mind so that you can make millions of people in indonesia imagine a little bit better i i will do my utmost this is my home you know yeah. whatever i am today you know i i owe a lot to indonesia and i i i'm a believer of karma so you know, <laughs> uh, i call it as my karm bhumi so for me this is my motherland and 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 i will need guidance from leaders like you and and we are fully committed you know because i'm enjoying it yeah. i i i'm like this gives me happiness yeah thank you so much for gracing this thank you thank, thank you, you. Teman-teman, itulah Vikram Sinha, pimpinan dari Indosat Oredo Hutchison. Terima kasih. Inilah Endgame. 